guys, Fabulous Mr. Fox here. We have had this idea for a while that we were going to do a series of videos we were going to call Satellites. We were going to look at some of the supplements that went along with the games that we recently reviewed, and we've never really gotten around to doing that. But you know what? Why don't I sit down, stop being a lazy punk, and actually talk about some stuff from Iron Claw. So today, I figured I would just take a look at the first one they released, The Book of Mysteries. Because what you've got here, when you actually get down and look at it, is a whole bunch of expanded magic and a whole bunch of interesting stuff that was around in the previous edition that did not make it into the omnibus for honestly good reasons. Within this, you'll find and a lot of little things that set stuff apart, like the priestly magic you could find in the old Avortapla supplement if you played first edition. There are different groups within the Church of Salome, different orthodoxies, and many of them have their own individualized magic. In order to get them, you have to be a member of their particular order. They have the seven virtues of Kindranagar. If you're not immediately familiar with the setting, Kindranagar is a legendary mage who is said to have invented thaumaturgy in his quest to create the perfect wizard. So he wrote seven additional spell lists in order to take whatever wizard you happen to be and just juice you through the roof, and boy do they do it. The virtue of mystery, for example, can actually allow you to become invisible, and there's not really any other way to do that within the setting. The virtue of, I believe it's culture, allows you to actually take people's skill away from them and use it yourself temporarily. Also, this brings back from the Avortapois book one of my absolute favorite things to ever appear in Iron Claw, the Charismas. And what a Charisma is, is it's basically a power you pick up if your character is so pure, so in tune with the Church of Salome that one of your virtues kind of becomes saintly. And this can be as simple as you always smell nice up to things as drastic as by location. You can literally be in two different places at once or levitate. And they're just really interesting and neatly done. I like the way everything was brought over into this edition with a few minor exceptions. There is an ability that the druids have that I always thought was really cool and it's in Gaelic so I can't pronounce it, but what it did is it forced the target of your spell to suffer birth pangs and that was pretty crippling in the previous edition. In this one, it's an inconvenience. I feel that it should be a little bit more drastic than it is. Now, one of the drawbacks of the Book of Mystery is that all of these are very specific. If you have one of the priestly casts, you're probably a member of a very specific order. If you want to be a druid, you're probably somebody who was trained in the Falon territory in the extreme northwest. If you want to have blessed magic, you are definitely a member of the Church of Lutara. There's just no way around that. I'm personally okay with that. Now there is one major disappointment I have with this book and that is they did not reprint The Fool from the Falon book. And I know they have the Book of Fools, but it doesn't really quite work the same, so I've got one of my favorite characters of all time that I can't move over into the new edition. What you have here is something that really expands what your characters can have and what they can do. It, we didn't really have a chance to talk about, but magic in the core book is very combat oriented, I'd say probably in the neighborhood of 75% combat. And I just really like to see more utility and out of combat usefulness for magic. This book has a lot of that. You'll enjoy it. So I'm going to be back to talk about the Book of Jade, which is actually something people have been requesting. I'm the fabulous Mr. Fox for Roleplay Roulette, and I will catch you next time.